Here's looking at you, Jesse. Whoever you are. It's one of those pictures which you love because it looks like so much fun and so effortless on the screen, but tremendously difficult to make. Holy shit! I love this kind of film, when you sort of risk yourself. I used to love just throwing myself around and doing most of my own stunts. Everybody was just as wet as you were, and basically you saw that people go do anything for Michael. If he says, let's go to the middle of the jungle where it's gonna be up to your knees in mud. We had a lot of fun, honestly fun. We laughed our asses off. It was a tremendous experience in terms of my close relationship with Kathleen and Danny. Get in! It was exactly why I became an actor, to have adventures like that. It's the best time I've ever had. Never been anybody's best time before. Oh, God, that's good. The story, you know, it's a good story. Diane Thomas, the uh, screenwriter of Romancing the Stone, who was working as a waitress up at Alice's restaurant up on Malibu in the pier, and was writing this in her spare time. And uh, I got hold of it and just loved it. And then I did go up to at Alice's restaurant. And she had the kind of quality of the character, Joan Wilder. But she was a, an attractive blonde who had a kind of a shyness about her, but, you know, a real need for adventure. Man, had just written this sort of fantasy. I mean it, I'm telling you, I'm impressed. I am. It's my way of living in another age. If you did that, I never would have met you. The thing about Diane Thomas is that her story is very similar to J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling was a woman who, you know, struggled and no one really believed in her and she sat down in a little cafe in Edinburgh and wrote this, these Harry Potter stories. And for Diane Thomas it happened the same way. She sat down and wrote this really new kind of script, something that started a whole new genre in Hollywood. And there weren't a lot of women writers then. It was still really hard for a woman to break into the business. And it was in a bidding situation and paid a lot of money for it. And was always accused, of, you know, it was ridiculous to pay that much money for a first-time writer. And my take is if it's a first-time writer or it's a tenth screenplay they've written, if it's there, it's priceless. And, you know, she and I became dear friends. Action! And then there was this young director named uh, Robert Zemeckis, who'd gone to the USC Film School, made two pictures, I Want to Hold Your Hand and Use Cars, which didn't quite work, although they were good at particularly used cars. And at 23, his career was over. And uh, I brought it to him uh, at 28, and he, he liked it, and off we went. I tried to get a number of actors to play the role of Jack Colton none of who accepted. And so I then said, all right, well, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the role, but I wasn't accepted as an actor. You have to understand this. As a producer, yes, but as an actor, no. It's just a guy trying to get out of from a television series into feature films. No, no, originally, uh, I wasn't even thinking about playing the part. And uh, I've always been pretty much uh, thinking in terms, if, if a production company, thinking as a producer and not thinking of parts for me as an actor, which I've, I've come to realize is a mistake because there's so few good parts anyway that you might as well, if you're gonna produce, uh, find something for yourself to act in. I don't think I was the first to be considered for the role, but then I did meet with Michael and Bob Zemeckis was directing Romancing the Stone. They wanted to see if I could look dowdy. And so we set up kind of a screen test where I ambled around in my sweat clothes and you no know, makeup. Romeo, Romeo, where art thou, Romeo? Kathleen plays that very well. She plays befuddled very well and she plays confused, but you can see her get tough as well. Are you finished? Thank you. Oh, no. 
Michael and Danny have this long history together. Danny DeVito is, you know, my oldest buddy. He and I were roommates together in New York when we first started. We shared the rent. That was cool. And then he went off and did streets of San Francisco. And I was still out of work in New York. Uh, doing like off-Broadway, off-off-Broadway work. And the good thing about that relationship was he still paid half the rent. So it was pretty good. He inherently, you know, was um, a nice Italian from New Jersey. And I'd, I'd ask him about it. I'd say, what's going on with that uh, movie? The pardon for me? He said, oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's part of Ralph. It's like a really great part. It's part of Ralph. Right? He says, oh, 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 yeah, well, I'll send you a copy of the script. It was... Right? Ralph peeks around corner. <laughs> oh, pops into trunk. So I said, well, you know, look, if they could win me an Academy Award, maybe, but it might get me a little exposure. Hey, you're on the wrong bus! Uh, as it turned out, they rewrote it and changed it up and stuff. He really worked overtime in creating his own part and, and creating that kind of manic energy. Well, goddammit, I don't care what you gotta do. Just get me that map. He is so funny. He really is. And, of course, he's so little. You know how someone would put their arm around your shoulder, you know? Well, Danny has to put it sort of around your waist, or he likes to go a little lower. They created three characters that are permanent. You could do movie after movie with them. I think we're kindred spirits in terms of the risk factor and just a sense of adventure we have. The great idea that Diane Thomas came up with is this is a woman who writes women's romances, and her life becomes one of those women's romances. My character, Joan Wilder, she's not pretentious, you know, she doesn't even have much confidence in the very beginning of the film. And of course, it grows along with uh, staying alive, basically. I need to get to Cartagena. <gasps> What she finds out is that the hero that she kept writing is not the hero that she could control, and it's a hero with rough edges. I, I ain't cheap, but I can be had. That was all written. My minimum price for taking a stranded woman to a telephone was $400. Will you take 375 in traveler's checks? American Express? Of course. Not a deal. He's got a little bit of a con artist in him, and he's a little bit of a scoundrel. And he loves her, but he might have said that I love you to lots of women. I love the ocean. You know, you just kind of get out there all by yourself. Nobody else around. So you're just going to sail away all by yourself? Yeah. Sounds lonely, Jack T. Colton. We seem to suit each other well. We're both good sports, let's say. She was extraordinarily patient and don't know any other actress who can put up with as much tough conditions as we had down there. Whew, it's tough in the jungle. The first movie was like, what a struggle to get made. I mean, the first day I got to work, it was pouring rain. I mean, like, pouring rain. Serious pouring rain. I get into a car with a guy. His windshield wipers are going like this. We were down in this little valley, and lo and behold, it started raining and, and raining horrendously. And we just shot it, you know, one little sequence of us walking, and we had just moved the crew down a little bit. The rain was going. 
when the hillside gave way. We had a huge mudslide that came down. And I was sort of sitting on the makeup man's case, and then the whole side of the mountain started to come down. So I was almost buried, and then they pulled me out of there, and I'm saying, please don't pull, please dig, you know, just, but they just yanked me out, tore all the skin off my left leg. It was rough. That scene was done fairly early in the schedule, so it gave us some idea of the elements and what we were gonna be dealing with. I liked Bob tremendously, I really did. He had a great enthusiasm, and between Michael Douglas and him, there was a sense that we could do anything. Bob Zemeckis is just a uh, very sick young man. <laughs> Bob, hey, that's not fun. Action! A great vision by Bob Zemeckis. You now can see the talent that this uh, guy had and what he was going to do. What are we stopping for? I can't hurt my favorite thing. He sees things wonderfully, and I think he has a tremendous sense of the build of the film, which I tend to lose after a while. It's very hard when you're going very much out of sequence. This is the line. I know I'm not crazy. Uh, and and uh, you're going to have to stay closer together. Okay. We've decided that. Let's try again. We had a great time doing it. And, uh, Michael always makes it really fun to be in the movie. and. Uh, he kept us always energized and churned up. We all, we all had a ball. Well, hi! Hey, how you doing? When we got washed out by rains half the time up in, up in the mountains of Mexico, we began to call it Douglas Land, where when the road was washed out, first thing I knew, we'd have five dump trucks filled with gravel there, you know, that Michael would rebuild the road, essentially. You got an umbrella? No. <laughs> okay, let's make some time. You yeah! We did a fair amount of the stunts, but the mudslide, you know, they had scooped out these troughs down the mountain, and they basically had these uh, about 200 gallons, you know, like five big, uh, barrels of water atop. So the stuntmen and woman would get down in the trough and they would dump this water. Oh, shit. And they would take off like, you know, anything ever seen. For us, they put us on a kind of board so that I wasn't just bumping along. And then when we got to the bottom, they had me up on a high ladder and I had to dive off the ladder and land in the in the water. But I love that stuff. <laughs> and of course, we have to thank a good storyboard artist who came up with the uh, famous splash between her legs. stitches I got on that film. <laughs> when we were shooting in the airplane, you know, with the marijuana and everything is, they had just sort of broken the back off the airplane, but it was all sharp edges. I was getting out of the plane one day and I I lost my balance and I threw my arms wide just to and managed to impale myself on this. So that was three stitches. And then when we were doing the fight in the fort when I was fighting Manuel Ojeda, the villain, I hit my head really bad on the stone. That was three stitches. Look at those snappers, Ralph. Most of all those were real crocodiles. I mean, the stories with those crocodiles down there, they were uh, real. There was one scene where the, he's taken the emerald and he's gonna go for the water, and then I'm supposed to go down and grab him and wrestle him. And, and they're usually kind of slow. So then I said, okay, action. And this crocodile must have like on cue. He took off, so I dove for him. He went whack, whack me across the face with his tail almost knocked me out. There's a scene that's not in the film where I walk through this field of crocodiles. 
Well, the guy in charge of the, uh, the crocodiles, I guess, said to me, look, if they start to open their jaws, that's when they're weakest. It's when the jaw is open and starts to come back down, they have the strongest muscle. So if you see them start to stand on their head, I said, oh, yeah, sure, I'm doing that, yeah. Look at those snappers. My friend Zach Norman, who played Ira, who's sort of a New York kind of character, has never really been out much. So he had this big shootout, and you when you're rehearsing him, you go, okay, I go bang, 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 you go bang, bang, right? Then they go bang, 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 bang. So, all right, let's try it a fast speed. Okay, bang, 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 bang. So he worked it all out. <laughs> then all of a sudden, the cameras roll for action, and now they're all loaded up with the full blanks. Well, this battle starts, you know, cacophony, you can't even imagine automatic weapons. And it's a big master shot, and all I see in the middle is I see Zach. And I see him, I see him wet his pants, fall to the floor, and thinking that he's gonna get killed. This is like, you know, we've never seen anything like this in his life. So he had a, an interesting education on romancing the stone. It's been a pleasure. You're leaving? You're leaving me? You're gonna be all right, Joan Wilder. Yeah. You always were. Well, I remember the first time we had a screening. It was in a theater in Westwood, I think, in L.A. Michael and Danny and I met before. Had a couple of margaritas, I think, you know, to prepare ourselves. And we were very nervous. We were very, very nervous. The measure of, of the audience's attention isn't always whether they're laughing or not, it's if they hold their breath, you know? And we'd hear all these, <gasps> I'd say, yeah, we got him. Follow that stone. I remember when I first saw Romancing the Stone, the first thing that hit me was that it had a classic comedic tone. It's more a direct descendant of Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin than it is of Animal House. I lost my langostino. So I think that kind of comedy doesn't date. For me, it was like a really big break because the picture was a success. You know, a lot of that was attributed to the combination of the people in it. It did a great deal for my career. I mean, Michael said it made me America's sweetheart. You know, I think for Diane, it was a, you know, a magical experience of, of watching what happened with that picture. It was her original dream. And, um, you know, it's uh, a great gift she gave to everyone. You know, whether it established a new genre, I'm not sure, but it gave Michael and I and Kathleen a real fun time. The heart, the green heart that Michael had had all these different attempts to, to make it. So we had a lot of extras. And so every week, whoever suffered the most got the heart. I got it twice. You really become a war veteran, uh, producing movies, you know, countries around the world and dealing with the elements. It's an exciting part, but it's, it's for the young.